Hello everybody, I am Jack from the Beard Network, and welcome to my PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale All-Star Guides. Over the next few weeks, we'll be breaking down each playable character in the game, analysing their moveset, learning some of their best combos, and assessing their super attacks. But before we get stuck in tomorrow with the first guide, I thought it might be a good idea to make this introductory video. If you have no idea what this game is about, go check out my review on thebeardnetwork.com where I explain the basics. There's a link to the review in the description. Already up to speed? Good. In this video, we'll discuss some of the more advanced aspects of the game and go over the terminology you'll most likely hear during the course of these guides. The first thing you need to learn is how AP works. Each individual attack in a character's moveset will yield a certain number of all-star points, or AP. This is what fills your super meter, and your super meter is how you win the match. At any point during the match, AP may be knocked out of other players, which you can then pick up. But the quickest way to fill your meter is by successfully performing combos. In any fighting game, a combo is a string of attacks quickly performed one after the other. A combo cannot be blocked or escaped from if the first of these attacks connects. Some characters in the game rely on combos more than others, but there's one aspect to them that every player should understand, and that is the concept of recovery. In these guides, the term recovery will refer to one of two things. When you successfully attack an opponent, they will undergo some kind of reaction. They could be thrown into the air, slammed into the ground, etc. For most attacks, but not all, once this reaction has played out, the opponent will enter an invincible state indicated by this flashing white light on their character. This light indicates that they have recovered from your attack. If you see this light in the middle of one of your combos, that means the combo has ended. No subsequent hits will count towards it. So, in order to maintain a combo, you must strike your opponent before they can recover from the previous attack. Recovery can also refer to the point in time where the animation for your character's attack has finished, allowing you to begin the next one. Like in most other fighting games, some attacks can be cancelled by others. Cancelling is when you interrupt one of your attacks with another, i.e. you can start one attack before the animation for the previous one has finished. These are the moves that you will most often make use of when crafting your combos. But now you're probably thinking, hang on, what's to stop me from making a super long 30 hit combo that will annoy the crap out of everyone? The answer to that is the infinite avoidance system. Remember how I said that each attack is worth a certain amount of AP? In a combo, that AP obviously adds up. When you reach a yield of 100 AP in one combo, your opponent will undergo what is known as the AP Burst. When the attack that pushes you over the 100 AP threshold connects, you will see an explosion. Your opponent will immediately be launched into the air, far enough away from you so that you can't follow up with another attack before they recover. This is what's known as Ejection, which we'll come back to in a second. When the AP Burst occurs, your combo will be awarded an extra 30 AP, so it pays to master the art. Each of these guides will teach you three high yielding combos, at least one of which should trigger the AP burst. Now, I don't claim to be the best All-Stars player in the world, so you don't have to take these combos as gospel. Experimentation is very much encouraged. Find what works for you. If you have the skill to pull off something flashier than what you see here, go for it. But I will do my best to bring you combos that I find both practical and effective. Now, it's also important to know the effect that each move has on your opponent, if you want to maintain your combo. I mentioned one of these effects a second ago, Ejection. Moves of this property will send opponents flying across the screen and out of your reach, allowing them to recover. Obviously, this type of move will end a combo. Other effects include Crumpling. When an opponent is crumpled, they will fall to their knees and then recover while laying flat on the ground. While they're falling, they are wide open for another attack. Flattening. This is similar to Crumpling, but the opponent will recover instantaneously and will not be open to another attack. Butt dropping. Oh, stop sniggering. Butt dropping is also similar to crumpling. This will knock the opponent onto their behind and force them to get back up. Recovery from this effect is quicker than crumpling, but because they don't enter the invincible state, your next attack will most likely connect, even if it doesn't continue the combo. Launching. Launching is split into two categories, mini launches and full launches. Mini launches will knock your opponent into the air at a low height, usually allowing you to follow up with another attack. Full launches will send them much higher, more often than not out of your reach. Sweeping. Some attacks will knock your enemy off their feet, but not as high into the air as even a mini launch. This leaves them open to more grounded attacks until they hit the floor and recover. 
While we're on the subject of airborne opponents, it's worth mentioning that some attacks can be effective counters against an incoming aerial assault. These attacks are known as anti-airs. During combos, anti-airs can be used to juggle your opponents and keep them airborne. Now it's time to talk defense. Holding L1 during the game will block most normal attacks. Any hits that connect while you're blocking will deal chip damage. In other words, the opponent will gain a reduced amount of AP per hit. You can also roll and evade attacks from this position by pressing left or right on the analog stick. This is your best method of avoiding the three things that can break a block. One, attacks that can be charged by holding their respective attack button. Two, throws, which are performed with the right analog stick. Each character has three throws, mapped to up, down, and forward on the stick. Unless they lead into a particularly good combo, we won't be discussing throws that much here, as the effects of each one are almost the same across every character. A forward throw will eject the opponent, an up throw will launch them, and a down throw will flatten them. The third thing that can break a block is, of course, supers. We'll get to those shortly. Each character has one more common defensive option, the air dodge. This is performed by pressing L1 while airborne and will render your character invincible for less than a second. The air dodge takes careful timing to master, but it's worth it, as it's your only defensive option in the air. The last thing we need to go over is how supers work. The amount of AP it takes to turn each level of super changes from fighter to fighter. The more effective it is, the more it'll cost. Level 1 supers require between 100 and 150 AP. These are primarily designed to earn you one kill, but careful timing and positioning could allow you to take out all opponents at once. The caveat is that level 1s are very easily interruptible. If you can strike the opponent before they make the killing blow, it'll cancel the super and all that AP will have been wasted. Level 2 supers, on the other hand, are impossible to interrupt. They will cost you between 300 and 400 AP and are easier to take out multiple opponents with, often two or three at a time. It is possible to miss with them altogether though, and you really don't want to waste all of that effort. For these guides, I'll be dividing the level 3 supers into four categories, making it easier for you to determine each character's maximum potential and whether that fits into your strategy. And also because I like categorizing things. Enhancements will transform your character in some manner that gives you an advantage over your opponents as you attempt to kill them. These are the easiest level 3s to avoid, but anyone who's not a complete novice should still net a respectable 3 to 5 kills. Most of them cost exactly 750 AP. Handicaps will instead transform or affect your opponents, giving them a disadvantage. For some handicaps, after being killed, opponents will return to normal when they respawn. For others, the effects remain until the super is finished. Handicaps are slightly stronger than enhancements, often netting you 4 to 6 kills, and also cost 750 AP. Bombardments are also very strong. Upon activation, the character will disappear from the stage and proceed to, well, bombard the remaining opponents with some kind of deadly force. These are very difficult to avoid and cost between 675 and 750 AP. Finally, screen clears are the weakest kind of level 3s. These will instantly kill all three opponents, no more, no less, no effort required. The characters with these supers tend to be catered towards novice players. On the plus side, they're extremely cheap at around just 600 AP, so it's theoretically possible to earn more than one in a single timed match. There's still more to all stars than what I've explained here, like item effects, stage hazards, and the wake up game, but it should be enough to prep you for these all star guides. Tomorrow is when the real fun begins. Be sure to come back then for the first of our guides, and then expect a new one every week from then on. I've been Jack from the Beard Network, thanks very much for watching, and I hope you enjoy what we have in store.